All right, let's look at verse 11 now. Verse 11. All right, now this is the person that I'm actually uh, most interested in than the Antichrist, believe it or not. There's so many mentions of Antichrist, Antichrist throughout the Bible, but this evil figure is the least mentioned. And to be quite honest, he's still a mysterious figure to me, and I want to spend more time researching this person. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay, so remember, the Antichrist just came from the pits of hell. He came up out of the earth, right? We already read that part. But there's another being that comes up out of the earth. So this guy is also a demon, so to speak. But notice that this creature coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Look at this. Okay, so... This is something that uh, you want to know. Notice that it had two horns like a lamb. So this animal is a lamb. Now, this is what I would recommend when you study, okay? Looks like the peppermint candy on top of this animal, but anyways, okay. Anyways, so when we look at this passage over here, I'm going to give you a big clue, and this is going to be something that onlineers is going to be a big help when they research false prophet. Look up every mention in the Bible that talks about false prophet, and I think you're going to find a lot of gold mine to this identity. Mm, okay. You might say, why is that? Because it already gave you a first clue. Two horns like a lamb, right? But it says right here, the mouth, okay, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a what? Dragon. So he speaks like the devil, though. Now remember, the dragon and the beast had great, had mouths that spoke blasphemies, correct? But they, their mouths held charisma. That's the point. There's a saying that's pretty interesting. When you are doing a speech in competition against a person, one of these groups of people they don't want to compete with in speech because they know these pe people are very good uh, at oratory skills are, believe it or not, ministers. Ministers are the people that a lot of, lot of the world recognize as those who have great oratory skills. They don't like to compete with those people quite often. Think about it. If you're going to have the best oratory skill, it's got to be something like a minister. That's why it supports the notion again where the Pope would be a great candidate for that one because he's considered as a minister role. The false prophet See, prophet. So he is one of those ministers. All right. Now, another thing is that he's a lamb too, right? All right. Let's look at the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Good teaching. This is good. All right. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse 15, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Why did the Bible call the false prophet two horns like a lamb? Because that's what a false prophet is. They dress up like a lamb. Now what I find interesting is that it doesn't really call it a lamb, although I could be wrong about that. It says as a lamb though. Why is that? Because they appear like a lamb. They give a false pretentious appearance. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of, what's the word? False prophets. Look at that. Mm -hmm. See? And God calls this person the false prophet, right? But look, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Boom. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Look at that. If there's something that this preacher wants to be, 
He would prefer to be a sheep in wolf's clothing in the eyes of the world rather than a wolf in sheep's clothing to the eyes of the world. See, that's what Joel Osteen, Rick Warren, and all these uh, mega pastors, you know what they are? They're wolves, but they appear as sheep to the world. But you get this pastor over here and other Bible-believing preachers who preach, we look like wolves to the world, but we're just sheep. We're just sheep dressed up as wolves in the eyes of the world. Like Dr. Uckman said, he would say, you know, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm a sheep in wolf's clothing. That's what he would say. <laughs> With, there is so much truth to that. Amen. There is so much truth to that. All right. Let's look at 2 Peter. And then we're going to look at 1 John. I'm going to show you something interesting here. 2 Peter and 1 John. Lord willing, maybe I might do a real long study on this because I see a lot of interesting things. Now, you've got to think about this. When the Bible talks about Antichrist and false prophet in the book of Revelation, here's a big clue. It is not the first time mentioned. That is something important to understand. The Antichrist and the false prophet is not first time mentioned at Revelation 13. Now, those official people, Antichrist, like the Antichrist himself, the false prophet himself, officially, yeah, the first mention you'll find out is Revelation 13. But God, he always saw Antichrists and false prophets before these official guys came in. And that's the big clue that will help a lot with your studying about the Antichrist and the false prophet. See, so if you want to understand more about the official Antichrist and the official false prophet, you've got to look at other mentions about the, what God sees as Antichrist and false prophet. So when you do that, that will help a lot with your research in identifying and understanding more about the false prophet and the Antichrist. I just gave you a big clue over there. All right, so let's look at first, uh, let's look at first John first. That way we can understand 2 Peter. Let's look at 1 John first. Now notice what the Bible talks about the Antichrist. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 2. Chapter 2. Look at verse 22. 1 John chapter 2. We'll read verse 22. The Bible says over here, Who is a liar but he that denieth Jesus is the Christ? He is what? Antichrist. Antichrist. So it's not just the Antichrist at Revelation 13. The Bible sees that it can happen even right now that there is an Antichrist. Uh, not only that, the Bible also shows that before the official Antichrist comes out, that there are already many Antichrists throughout the world, actually. So we're going to look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Now notice that it talks about at verse 12, not as Cain who was of that wicked one. So it's talking about, in context, the wicked one of Satan. Then we also look at verse, uh, it's going to be chapter 4. Notice at verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many, what? False prophets. But keep reading, look at verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of what? Look at this. Look, look at how they go, coincide together. False prophet and antichrist. But this was, happen, this was happening currently at John's time. So notice that even before the official antichrist, the official false prophet came out, the Lord saw miniature versions of that, unofficial versions, so to speak, long before. So there are antichrists, actually, in our world. Um, I, am tr I don't know why I'm having a hard time finding that passage. It should be chapter 1 John 2. So I read it 1 John 4. Let me try to find that 1 John 2 again. Should, uh, it should be easy to find. I don't know why it's so hard to find. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it is a long chapter, actually. All right, so I'm going to... Actually, I have to show it to you, so... Hopefully I can find it. Let's see. Let's look at chapter 3 again. Mm, 
chapter 4. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong about this. I thought it was at first. I know it's at first John, so I guess. And no, it's not chapter one. I know that for a fact. Huh. Oh, well. I know it's at first John, but I guess I'll never find it. All right. If someone can search Antichrist at the book of first John, maybe they can find something. Okay. And then just give me all the reference mentions about it. But we're going to look at second Peter for now. Go to second Peter. Chapter 2, chapter 2. Notice who rises up at the last days. The Bible warns that in the last days there will be false prophets. See that? But look what false prophets do. They're good in speech to make money. Remember the false prophet? He has the mouth of a dragon. That's why he's going to be, that's what one big clue about a false prophet is that he's going to be very good oratory skills. That's why I really think that your pastor mentioned this before, is that Billy Graham, I can give him the benefit of the doubt of being a safe person. I can allow that to happen. But I believe this very strongly. To be, you have to be a person like Billy Graham. More, uh, more so than Joel Osteen, I believe Billy Graham is a stronger candidate. You might say, why so? Because this man literally is the world's, uh, all world religions bend to him. And news reports don't mention anything negative about Billy Graham. And Billy Graham, the thing about him which makes it even more dangerous, is that when you hear him preach the gospel, he sounds more conservative than Joel Osteen and Rick Warren. If you look at his son, every time he's at a news interview, his son always mentions about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we can all agree and amen to. But, how is, he, but uh, how is he proven to be evil then if he speaks the truth on news? See, that's what a false prophet is. He knows when to switch sides in playing different parties. That's why Billy Graham is very, very clever. So that's why in those meetings he sound very conservative. And he sound like a Bible believer like you, but that's only when you show that portion of him. When you look at the other political meetings that he has, I mean, he, you'll see a total 180. Yes, sister. Uh, 1 John 2, 18. So it is 2. Okay, so let's look at 1 John 2. I can't believe I couldn't find that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is verse 18. It was three verses behind it. I don't know why I couldn't see that. 1 John 2, 18. Now, this is the verse that shows that there are already many antichrists, but the official antichrist did not come out yet. So this is the verse that's key. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Right? The official one. Even now are there what? Many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. See? End times. That builds up the evidence more that the false prophet, uh, well not false prophet, that the Antichrist really looks like a Pope figure. You might say, why? Because there are already many antichrists currently, John says. During that time, there is one power that never lost, and that is a Roman king ever since Jesus' time all the way to today and even at the tribulation. It is always a Roman, pontiff Roman ruler. So that's why I, I see more and more it's got to be a pope figure. And then the false prophet, I can see it more and more as a minister figure like Billy Graham. Why? Because according to 1 Peter chapter 2, look at this. It's a typical sign of a false pastor. 1 John 2, 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. See that? So people online who post false doctrines make up their own channels. They are just like what this false prophet is going to be. You better watch out for that. See? who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, they with what? Feigned words make merchandise of you. So notice right here that they've got great swelling words. Great swelling words.
but they're also very powerful because why? It's all merchandise. Look at verse 18. Verse 18. For when they speak, what? Great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error. While they promised them liberty. See that? So these pastors all talk about independence, equal rights. Why? Because it's all about freedom. See, liberty, right? They themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. But he's actually a slave. No wonder Revelation 13 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall be what? Be made into a captive. How about that? All right, let's go back to Revelation 13. Another thing about this Antichrist that we can figure out what he is mostly like is at, and I got to end. <laughs> so uh, there, were, uh, there were, I'm, I'm a little bit past the time now. So yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I was about to say it and then I lost it. So sorry. The, the remaining parts of the false prophet is going to be shown, and I'm going to connect that to this. So, so far we got first clue. He's, he's like a Billy Graham figure. You can really see that. He, uh, why? Because Billy Graham also has, not only is he mostly a minister, but it's that political connection and power. So, um, we can see that if you have that kind of a Billy Graham again, a second Billy Graham, that would be perfect for a false prophet. But there are two other things that I noticed. And I'm going to give you this interesting combination of what a false prophet is going to be. So we'll, we will cover that in our next Revelation study with this interesting figure.